Hi everyone, this is Sunesh, and in this video, I'd like to share an experience I've had, and this is to do with being asked a question, or questions. The first question was, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is your willingness to change? So, looking inside myself, I was like, 11 out of 10, you know, that, that, that willingness, um, my definition of willingness was at the time, you know, I would will myself to change that passion, the drive, the motivation to change is there. Um, and I suppose if you hear the sound of my words, you can also, after that statement, just, you know, ever so slightly hear a dot, 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 but. <laughs> so, um, but just the straightforward question, you know, the person asked me, what is, um, scale of one to 10, what's your willingness to change? Looked inside myself and the feel of it, my experience of the willingness to change was 11 out of 10. So he says, okay, all right, good, um, wow, you know, kind of impressed, uh, wanting to play the game very well there, uh, which you'll understand in a moment. And then the next question was, scale of 1 to 10, what is your willingness to learn? And again, my answer was 11 out of 10, because with the questions, you know, the words and the way it was asked and who I was in that moment. Um, but more importantly, my feel and experience of the willingness to change and the willingness to learn was 11 out of 10. It was in me, through me, year, through and through. And that's a question I'll ask you right now. What, if you look inside yourself, um, your immediate... Uh, response to your willingness to change and your willingness to learn. Uh, honestly, you'll feel that almost like a fire lighting up inside your solar plexus and feels good. Like, yeah, 10 out of 10. And a moment after that, it's like the whole mood changed, the whole... Uh, presence, nature and feel of the moment. And, and this happened over the phone. But you know when you you have that alignment with an individual you're working with and you know you can just feel a change busy happening in real time on the other side uh, of the conversation, whether it's happening in a different country. And everything stops for a moment and he says, well, I call bullshit. <laughs> And inside of me, I was like shaking a bit because, whoa, what do you mean? I was being honest there, you know, 11 out of 10, come on. That willingness is here for change and for learning, yeah. And, and obviously with having context of where I was at in, in my mind and inside myself and in my life, he pointed out some interesting facts of, well, if I had the willingness to change, if I had the willingness to learn, then why am I not changing? Why am I not learning what I need to and do whatever it takes to change? Willingness does not go without action. It goes hand in hand. So looking back, I realized the facts, the honesty, my reality, the truth that I'm living is that my willingness to change, along with my willingness to learn at that time, was more like 0 0.1 out of 10. And what also stood out more um, this is also in reference to what they refer to as the uh, personal or, or self-development scale. And let's say, for example, you have a willingness to change, which is you may have a <clears throat> 10 
out of 10, but your willingness to learn is one out of 10, then that willingness to learn is what's going to define your entire development, not the one that you think is going to be the most that will overshadow the one that's least. No, 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 no. So here it's to find the balance in your everyday life of the willingness to change as well as the willingness to learn, how those to complement one another in your actual, real, physical, um, visible change inside yourself and things in your everyday life. So there's a couple of dimensions I'd like to discuss here that can assist and support everyone to have a look at uh, how empowering willingness to change and willingness to learn can be. Um, But also take note of, you know, how it might have shook you to realize that your willingness is not really a 10 out of 10 because in reality there's how much, almost like an endless list of things that, you know, let's say great ideas of things that you want to do but you just never get to, you don't even bother to write it down. Um, Things, issues, problems, secrets, deceptions, self-betrayals, things that you're keeping hidden inside yourself, all of those stuff you know, we, we tend to completely put in the back burner of our consciousness and it doesn't matter that we are actually really physically living it out, you know, how, to what extent, and this is the question I ask myself, to what extent am I deceiving myself here? You know, to what extent, for how long, you know, am I going to be able to keep this up, this lying to myself, this, that believing that, the feeling, this experience of a willingness to change is going to be enough. It's like I've been hiding within and behind that is what I realize. And as long as I'm in my reality, living unchanged, no willingness to change, no willingness to learn, but inside myself on a mental level, I'm clinging on to this feeling, this experience of a willingness to change and a willingness to learn. I mean, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to ourselves and our lives? So where I'd like to start is with what shook me in that moment. What is that shaking, shocking experience that we can sometimes have? Because um, we can often misunderstand that. You know, on a mental level, my thoughts wanted to go, how dare you say that, you know, to, to the guy who went, well, I call bullshit. But it was so perfect because that shaking, what actually happened there is what it shook me awake. It shook me to my core. That shaking was, you've been caught out. You cannot now, well, you can if you really want to, but it's going to be really difficult. Well, that's my experience. Um, you cannot continue deceiving yourself, lying to yourself like this, living in two worlds, essentially. In one world, you escape where in a conversation with someone, everything can sound so nice. And I also found a dimension where when you asked me those questions, I wanted to sound better. I wanted to sound good. I wanted to please him. I wanted to be someone I am not. And that point also really got me deep inside myself because I realized, okay, stepping back, I asked myself, well, how often do I do this? How often do I, am I in the presence of other people where only in a fleeting moment of a conversation, I want to please, I want to be better, I want to be more. So I sound good. And I know exactly how to do that, how to sound how to not only deceive myself but deceive others in in such fleeting moments of conversation where everything's fine, then I go back to my reality and it is hell, chaos, a mess, broken down into pieces. And fascinatingly, you know, that also often uh, reflects in our relationship on social media 
um, I've been exposed to it there as well, you know, where um, it was once uh, an instance where I posted some photos, but I was having an operation at the time and there were fleeting moments of me smiling, you know, and so many people had the assumption that I was happy, you know, that everything was going well and I was healthy and jubilant and expressive just from fleeting moments, you know, and not considering the rest of, let's say, the 23 hours um, and 59 minutes uh, and, you know, a few seconds because that was only one picture taken that's a second out of an entire day. But that also just comes to show that asking that question, how much do we define ourselves and others based on those fleeting moments that we see in our everyday lives? And how much we do not consider the rest of our lives and another person's life. Right, everyone. So we'll continue more with this in the next video. But here's some quite a few dimensions to have a look at and open up. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.